They must save the souls of those misguided Mormon women. It's a mockery of the Lord's will that Heber Clausen should claim two wives. I know how you feel, preacher. Stop in a couple of hours. Two women, one pregnant. They won't get very far. Now. Suppose they followed us? I don't know. How do you know anything when something like this starts? Just how do you measure hatred and prejudice? It all happened so fast. Just a few days ago, we were all sitting in church. You, Susanna, Elizabeth, Ann, and me. You saw it born there, Joe. That's the way it always is. The least expected time and the least expected place. Well, we'd better get moving if we're going to catch up with Susanna and Elizabeth, Ann. for me this way, Susanna. Our husband has lost his ranch, the horses that he loves. And he's had his faith in his fellow man put to still another test. Elizabeth Ann, this child, our child, we mustn't let it be taken from him, regardless of the cost. No.
been a real pleasure doing business with you, Mr. Cartwright. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Baker, and thank you for your hospitality. Next time you're up around our way, you make sure you stay at the Ponderosa with us. Well, you can really count on that. I've got to congratulate you on choosing Heber Clausen for your cutting horses. That man really has a way with horses, even if he has a morning. Well, come on, boys. Better head back to the ranch now. Goodbye, sir. Have a Goodbye, horse. Adios, Mr. Baker. Well, it's been pretty good here. Hope little Joe's done as well. I'm sure he has. Boy, you reckon the two of us can move all them horses? Well, son, we're just about to find out. Go to Elizabeth Ann Heber. She needs you. She needs your strength and reassurance. I was so worried. Well, maybe now that... Maybe now that Carbone, the preacher, got that fellow violence, maybe they'll leave us alone. I wish that were true, but it's not, and you know it. So does Heber. How things could change. Besides, we'll be joining up with Pa and Hoss pretty soon. Finishing the clothes for our child. Oh. We have so much to be thankful for. You and Susanna and I. We have our love. And as long as we keep that, nothing can happen to us. 
always have that. So we have nothing to worry about, do we? Won't you smile for me, Heber? <laughs> Hadn't you better go give Susanna a hand? Guess I am. <laughs> sure don't need any help here. Neighbor, don't you go sending us off by ourselves again. I'll be with you forever. And a day. What that girl is doing. Does she have any idea what's going on? Of course she knows what's going on. She's knitting, isn't she? That's what women usually do when they have babies. I swear, if you aren't two of the doggonest women I have ever met in my life. <laughs> Susanna? Got a confession to make. Up to five minutes ago, I was ready to give up. You were? No. Even this country is beginning to look good to me. That's pretty quiet. Yeah, I still can't believe it. Those people in the aisle. They seem decent enough. Oh, they are, Joe. For the most part. But prejudice has never respected decency. I've seen it so many times. But I kept telling myself it couldn't happen to me. You just wonder what happens to people. Well, anyway, we're gonna make it all right. Some fine doctors in Virginia City. Thank you. I'm going back to Salt Lake. I want to be with my people where I belong. I defied my church once when I stayed in Beehive while the others were called back. And they forgave me. Now's my chance to prove myself worthy of that forgiveness. I start all over. Build a new house like Susanna and I did when we were first married. Most important, I'll raise my child in my own. I've got no fear of the future, Joe. I do regret that I've had to put Susanna and Elizabeth Ann through all this. But you're going down there, too. Thank you, Joe.
can't do this to Elizabeth Ann. We've got to kill her. and try and reason with him? You can't argue with the devil, Susanna. Heber! Don't let Susanna try to bargain with Grant Carbo. That man is evil, and you know how he feels about her. No, Don't worry. Now we just have to wait him out. Just get the men over to one side. I don't want anything to happen to those women. Nothing's gonna happen to Susanna. I'll promise you that. Mm-hmm. I was really thinking more of the other one. One's gonna have the baby. She's the second wife, and that's where the sin is. Preacher? That's a moral problem, I reckon. And that puts it in your camp, not mine. How much further to where we're supposed to meet Pa? We can get moving again. It's only about four or five miles. Makes you think I'd do that. Come on, brother, get there. Tell him I could use some help. Joe, I'm not listening to you. Look, I'm not going to argue with you about this. Those two women need you, and so does your child. <laughs> Try and give us just five minutes, and then you come on. We have to get moving. It's only a little ways. Their choice. Come on, Elizabeth Ann. You lie down in the back. You'll feel better. Cut him off. We can't let that kid stay at our back. Now listen. There's only one of them up there. Move in on him.
these horses moving. Who are they? It's Carbo and his men. Carbo? Listen, if you three think you can hold them down, I'd like to get back with the women. The women? I'll tell you about it later. Go ahead. Dave, you got any idea why we're here? Yeah, wages. No, I don't like it. That Mormons never done nothing to me. All four of them are out there together. That means the two women are alone at the wagon. And I shall go to them. And I shall pray with them. Here in this barren land. I shall drive the sin from their souls. I've spoken to you before, preacher. I'm going to speak to you again. You stay put. I'm running things. We are both soldiers marching in the army of the Lord, my friend. It is your duty to destroy the day, night, and the heathen. It's my duty to save souls. Now, you're going to stay put if I have to knock your teeth out. Mr. Carbo, our church. You wouldn't have no church unless you had my money. It's about time you understood that. Now you behave yourself and do like I say or that money stops. with little Joe. I'll be able to hold off Carbon and his men for a while, but I just don't know how long. How's Elizabeth Ann? I think our time's very near. What are we gonna do, Heber? What are we gonna do? <gasps> Haven't seen anything move over there in ten minutes. Bring where I'm off. Uh, they're still all right. Let's have a look. Dave. 
Come along with me. What are you going to do? I ain't going to save any souls, preacher. I'm just going to get me what I come for. Our mission must not fail. It won't. I'm not sure I did the right thing, letting him go that way. Preacher, you do the right thing when you do what Grant Carbo tells you to do. There just ain't no other way to go in this part of the country. Most especially, Father, those who have caused such pain in our lives, that their hearts may be open to thy love. My dear husband, Heber. Dear sister Susanna, try to rest now. You're both so good to me. You mustn't worry about me so. We love you, Elizabeth Ann. We love you so very much. much about delivering babies. She should have a doctor. Yes, I know, I know. What's to become of us? God wills. Are we to run forever because our faith is different from that of others? No, Suzanne. Not forever. Someday there'll be a better world. A world without bigotry and hatred and blind prejudice. There has to be. I refuse to believe that men have died in vain from the beginning of time. I love you, Heber. I love you with all my heart. left me no other way. Don't you see that?
are you waiting for? Can't you see there's been murder here? That's right, Polly. There has been murder here. And you're responsible for it. I'm not listening to this. You three are day knights, hired killers. Are they, Mr. Polly? Brad Carbo shot our husband in the back. He never had a chance to defend himself. I said they must have seen it. Are you men enough to stand up and admit it? Or are you still afraid of Carbo even when he's dead? Don't listen to her. You men know why we're here. We're here on a mission for the Lord. Those three day nights must pay. In the name of the church, they must pay. What Lord, Mr. Parley? What church? You call yourself a man of God. You don't even know the meaning of the phrase. Look, look there. Look at our husband. There was a true man of God. And you and your hatred and your prejudice, you killed him. Now, you men know why we're here. Those two women must be cleansed of their sins. In the name of the church. Carbo never gave a hoot about you or your church. He was just using you. I don't want no more trouble, Joe. All Carbo ever wanted was this woman. And everybody knew it. Except you, preacher. Oh, you're wrong. Mr. Carbo was a devout man. You can't go. Don't talk to me, preacher. You make me sick at my stomach. But you can't leave. Our work's not completed. You two women. You, you must know I meant only good. I... It was just like the story of Mary Magdalene. Believe me. I never meant any harm. Why don't you leave them alone with their grief? I only... only wanted to save their souls. Peter, I think you should concentrate on saving your own soul. No! Wait! We must all work for salvation! <laughs> to move on that wagon, I think it'd be fatal. Yeah, I can make a ride to Humboldt Crossing and be a doctor there. Well, I think you better do that. I'll tell Susanna this we can give her that much hope. Susanna, why don't you uh, go get you something to eat? Oh, 
if you need to touch us, I know. But I ain't doing a whole lot of good around here. I think I'll saddle up again and see if I can't round up some of those horses. I'll take care of her. I promise, Heber, I'll take care of her. And I'll take care of your child. You have a baby yet? No. I'm that doctor doesn't get it pretty soon. I was a little worried. Things, things are real rough with her. This is Dr. Bingham, Pa. Glad to know you have to. Oh, yeah, we'll... We'll visit later. Where's the patient? to last this long. Just, just hanging on for the baby, I guess. What about the baby? Will it be born all right? It's questionable at best. But the mother's struggling to give it every chance. What if she dies before the baby's born? That will reduce the chances of the infant's survival to almost none. Baby will be all right. Of course it will. Yes. Yes, it will, won't it? Of course. Now, now, don't worry. You go to sleep now. The doctor's here.
Reverend Bessie, glad you came. It's a fine baby boy, Mr. Cartwright. And Elizabeth Ann? She's conscious now, but she can't last very long. Perhaps my wife and I should go to her now. They asked to be alone. He's beautiful. If only Heber could have known. He knows Elizabeth Ann. I love you. Susanna, will you take care of our son? Always. Of course I will. of stress, Heber always recited our 13th article of faith. I remember. Did you recite it for me? I want to hear it just once more. We believe in being honest, true, chaste, benevolent, virtuous, and in doing good to all men. Indeed, you may say that we follow the admonition of Paul. We believe all things, hope all things. We have endured many things. We hope to be able to endure all things. If there is anything lovely, virtuous, good report, praiseworthy, we seek after these things.
innocent infant. What's to become of it? We'll take it, of course. You'll take it? You'll take this child? You stand there in your great and mighty righteousness and tell me you'll take this child from me? Susanna, please. Your bigotry and prejudice have already taken my husband from me. And my sister. And now you stand there and tell me that you'll take this child. Mrs. Clausen, I only meant... I know what you meant. But this is not my child, that it was born of another. Don't you understand? This child's father was my husband. We wanted children, my husband and I, more than anything in the world. But when the Lord in his wisdom saw fit to deny me that privilege... My husband took Elizabeth Ann to wed with the blessing of our church and in the sanctity of our church. This child is as much mine as if it were born of my body. It will be raised in its father's faith and in its father's image. Mrs. Clausen, you did not let me finish. No one will take your child from we were a family, the three of us. We loved each other. I meant only that we want to take you into our home. We want to help you. We want you to stay with us as long as you wish. Your fate is not ours, but we have deep respect for your church. It is proper that a son should be raised in the faith of its father. You don't want to take my child? Oh, no, dear. Forgive me. Forgive me. For a moment, I lost faith. We all have moments when we lose our faith, my dear. We would be less than human if this were not so. Let me help you with your son, Mrs. Clausen. Beautiful baby, Mrs. Clausen. Someday, hopefully, they'll make the world that evil was seeking. I just hope it comes soon enough so my son can see it. 